Uh, hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation in Seattle, and I want to show uh, the weather data from the U.S. Uh, wharf model and uh, how you can get it and how they evolve with time. And we have some annotated, sort of annotated examples to show. And so where you can get, you can get the data, of course, from the UW website, and I'll show you a link to that in a moment. But we've set this up for an easy way to get it. You go to starpath.com forward slash local. That brings you to this uh, index of services that we have set up uh, to read. And so we're going to first go right here to this model uh, data. And here is the... Uh, Here's the picture that you see. And what we've done is we've just reached into their website and pulled out the latest map for the uh, northern waters, what we've called northern waters here. And then uh, right below it then is the one for the southern waters of Puget Sound. And so this is the data here. And this will always be, when you go to there, the latest one they have online. And then you can you can click through here to go through the next maps like that. And if you want to, you can go back here. And then, uh, let's see, where is that? Oh, UW Atmospheric Sciences. You can go here. And this is the actual the raw data uh, on their website. And this is the, the oh, four-thirds, one and a third kilometer data here, which is what we're looking at. And uh, actually, we see something interesting. We, these actually go out. They compute these out for 60 hours. So we've actually here, what time is it? Uh, uh, oh, do we have Greenwich? We have Greenwich Mean Time on our site, don't we? Yeah. See, here it's uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30 Greenwich Mean Time. And... Um, and uh, so let's go here. I'm going back here again. So 6.30 Greenwich Mean Time. Look, they're not done. They're running. This data is coming online, actually. It's not what I meant to show you right now. But this actually data is coming online right now. And if, as you go, as you watch later, right now they only have 15 hours. It's going to go all the way out to 60. So this model is actually running at this very moment here. And this initialization that they're doing now is the one for... Um, uh, this is zero zero Zulu. Okay, that's that's all I wanted to show now. But they have then um, two two versions that we show here. And but a little bit before I go into this, I want to show one other thing that we have here that helps interpret these maps. And that would be if you go to this page on pressures, the link that called pressures. So here's the area we're talking about, the waterway. And these are mountains. There's a mountains here, Olympic Mountains. And there's a set of mountains we'll see in a minute all along this island here, Vancouver Island. And then there's mountains over here. So this is a valley here. And this is a valley here, like this. So basically, in these valleys, the wind, the wind direction is determined by the pressure. If it's higher here than here, the wind goes that way. And if it's the other way, higher here goes here. Likewise here. And in this page, we point out that on the average, the difference is if there's one millibar, there's 10 knots of wind in this area, roughly, plus or minus 2. Uh, 10 knots of wind for every 1 millibar difference between here and here or here and here. So that's the magnitude of the pressure drop across these valleys that will generate the wind. And then, I'm not going to do it at all right now, but then we have links here to the actual live pressures and the rate of change of the pressures and so on so that you can get a feeling for how if the wind's light here, if it's how it's going to fill in by just looking at that pressure drop right here and the tendency down here, comparing those. But right now, I just want to show that, that we're looking at something like uh, um, the 1 millibar across here is 10, somewhere between 8 and 12, but on the average, about 10. So now, let's actually go look at these maps. And you see, here's, here's what I want to step through, three or four of these, just to show you what they look like on the inland waters. And we've done a little bit of uh, uh, artwork here. These are the two maps. That's the top map. that We put those together. So we downloaded those, pasted them together so they line up right, so we can show the whole waterway, northern waters, southern waters. And on top of that, we've highlighted the isobars. Uh, so and and so and here's another issue they have to deal with looking at these maps. Whoops, I gotta go back to the first one. Okay, they don't. Uh, these maps don't do a very good job of showing what the isobars are. They might label one, 
sometimes there's whole pictures where there's none labeled, but here they label, it looks like they label 1020, two places, but they don't label any of the others. And But down the bottom here, they'll tell you that the lowest on the whole page, you get to figure out where it is, is 1019, and the highest on the page somewhere is 1023. You get to figure out where that is. And then they also tell you it's always true that the interval is one millibar. So one trick you can do is the, the pressure over the land is always going to be lower. It's always going to be lower. So that will help you identify the isobars. And, um, and so we have here, and then we, we added this, of course, and so we, we highlighted these. So this is like this red one. That's a 1020. 1020 isobar, uh, 21, and that's 22. Somewhere up here is a 23, and so forth. And way down here must be the 19. But so you see here it's going 20, uh, 19, uh, 20, 21, 22, and over here is 22. But this is then, no, this is actually a ridge. So this pressure right here, even though it's 22 here and 22 here, it's not 22 here. It's definitely got to be higher than 22. And it's probably not all the way up to 23 or very much beyond 23, or they'd have another isobar in there somewhere. But it's, it's going to be, it could be 23, it could be, uh, what is this, 22? It could be 22.5, 8, 9, something like that. So this is a ridge. You know, over this Puget Sound area, you have a ridge of high pressure. A ridge and then you can look and then the other thing is this looks like the and these little arrows are the wind now it's really hard to see but sort of the dark the dark part at the top of this is where the feather is so these are like uh, north northeasterlies and these are light northerlies and this is white the wind scales over here so this purple here is like anywhere between two and a half and and seven and a half and so they have very light air. There's something like five knots, nominally five knots, plus or minus two and a half, in this area here from the north. And that's probably because this ridge is a little higher here than it is. See, these guys are a little closer together here. The, tw the, the 22s are closer together here and farther apart here. So it's maybe a little bit lower pressure. And that other page, you can actually look up what the pressure is and, and resolve that issue completely. And then, so let me just then uh, step through the, this is 17 Zulu, we just have a few, that's 18 Zulu, and then you can, you can play this then slower to look at how these evolve, that's 18 Zulu, and you watch the isobars move over time, and this then is the 19 uh, Zulu, like that, and uh, 20 Zulu. See, it looks like the wind's picking up here a little bit. This orange, now we're up at 15 knots here. And uh, you can look out here in the straits and see what's going on. 20, 21, Zulu. Uh, 22, Zulu. 23. So this is how these isobars change. Uh, and then that's the next day, a zero, zero on the next day. And so with a very accurate barometer, especially an accurate calibrated barometer, which is really a doable thing these days, um, then you can get a lot of information about what's going on by measuring the pressure and having some kind of guideline like this. Now again, this whole, this video is from an article that's talking about two sources of pressure, two sources of weather data. So we have this pressure and wind forecast, but we're also going to have what they call the HER data, H-R-R-R, data to compare to. Uh, these, by the way, these blue lines on here are roads. That's like, this is a so-called I-5 corridor. These are highways. So that is the main thing I wanted to show on that. And just let me recommend that you log in at some point to uh, starpath.com. Uh, let's see, can I go? Oh, yeah, there it is. Whoops, back. Uh, whoops, that's our home page. Uh, there. That's the index. And then you could, these are actual real observations here, and then real zone forecasts for each part of here. So it's, it's an interesting page, and I'll try to later come back and make a video on how to use this source. But that's all I wanted to show for now, to show those weather maps from UW, and how we're going to, later in this, in the talk that this goes with, uh, they will be compared to other data.